Here's the finished painting sketch of Stonehenge. This was probably one of my favorite plein air paintings I've ever done. Just plein air experiences. It was very cool. It was actually really cold outside. It's probably, I don't know, 50, 55 degrees. It felt very cold to me in the moment. But, uh, you know, when you're painting, you just kind of, I tuned all that out. I blocked all the, uh, after I painted, it was, I was shivering. It was very cold. <laughs> but anyway, we're starting here at Stonehenge, painting on location. And it was a cloudy day. Cloudy morning, unfortunately. But I was happy to capture it either way. So I put some gray down for the sky. And what I'm doing now is just taking off some pigment, lighting, lightening up the value of the sky. I put in some green grass. So this is just the block in stage. First layer of paint. The lights of the scene. And this is a pretty tricky scene because it's overcast. It's all basically reflected light and shadow. There's not really a direct source of light like the sun. It's more diffused light. So all the values are more close together. And well, you see what I'm doing now, the green, it's much, there was two different patches of green grass uh, around Stonehenge. And the green closest to me was a cooler, more English type of green that you normally see. And then uh, the green on top of it was more of a warmer red type of green. Really interesting to capture that. And I really got the colors uh, pretty nailed down. So I'm really happy about this sketch. And now I'm working on the thousand year old, you know, a few thousands of year old stone here. Really cool to capture this. And with the stones, I, uh, I let some of them bleed into the sky, as you can see. And something I learned or relearned is that it was very cold outside. So things take much longer to dry. Um, you know, the past few days on this trip that I took, this was probably day, this was day five on our, on my trip through England. And the days before this, we were in London and areas around there. And it was much, much hotter. I mean, it was probably 80 or 90 degrees, very hot outside. And the paintings dry super quickly. And then when I got to Stonehenge this morning, you know, I have to kind of slow down because the you know, the watercolor takes a lot longer to dry. But what I was going to say is with these stones, you can see I'm doing a lot of wet into wet. And I'm varying the colors as I'm going. So some of them are much grayer and cooler. And then now some of them are getting warmer and more red. You know, on the stones, there's a lot of like green moss and red green moss. It was just really cool, man. So that's what I'm trying to show here in these stones. Now you can see, get that beautiful color variation there in that all one shape. And that's, that's what painting wet into wet uh, does, especially when you vary the colors as you're going along and you let them bleed together. You just get this really beautiful um, gradient, gradation. And now I'm uh, creating some value, subtle value changes there. And the key word there is subtlety, you know, nuance, being very subtle about it, especially on an overcast day like this. Everything is very subtle. And I'm just taking my time, making sure I'm getting the drawing down right. I had a pencil sketch, but, you know, I'm still looking up uh, at what I'm doing, at what I'm painting. And uh, if you haven't seen, I posted a video of this, uh, the raw video of me painting a Stonehenge. My girlfriend, while I was painting this, was taking some footage. Um, she was watching me for the beginning, the beginning stage of this painting. She was uh, squatting down with me, watching me paint this. And then she realized there was about 10 people crowding around me, watching me paint this. So she decided to take some footage of it. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out on my channel. Uh, it kind of shows uh, the, the amount of pressure I was under <laughs> with a lot of people watching me. I had about, from any point in time, there was seven to ten people uh, just crowded around me. But I, I tried to really block them out, and uh, I didn't really look up at anybody or anything while I was painting this. I mostly 
was just focused on Stonehenge and f looking down at my painting. So I was I was trying to uh, I pretty much had tunnel vision. I was just super focused on creating a good painting, and I, I couldn't worry about what people had thought, what it looked like, or anything like that. So that's a lesson on you know keeping your cool, man. Sometimes if uh, I did have somebody in the beginning stage talk to me, you know they were wondering if I had a camera attached to the sketchbook and. And they said, oh, so you're going to do a time lapse and put it on YouTube. And I was like, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. But uh, other than that, nobody really bothered me or anything. Um, I mean, nobody actually bothered me. But, I, you know, I had somebody talk to me. It wasn't that big a deal in the beginning. But uh, at this point, I'm just super laser focused. So what I'm painting right now are some hills in the background. There were some hills, and then there were some trees on top of those hills. So that's what I'm trying to show. And they were... Um, I think they were darker than the stones. I can't really remember, but that's what I think. That's what I'm trying to show here, is they were darker compared to the stones. And actually, what I'm painting right now, those two little dark spots in the middle, uh, they're actually that's a mistake. The dark spots were supposed to be on the lower half of the stones, not the upper half. And you'll see me here fix that in a second. And uh, I just remember painting that in, and as soon as I did it, my girlfriend said, I think you just put those in the wrong spot. And I was like, yep, I know. I'll fix it. It's not a big deal. You know, I was trying not to panic here. But uh, this was our busiest day of the trip, so I was trying to not spend a lot of time on this sketch, really just bang it out real quick. See, there we go. I fixed it now taking off as much pigment as I can, and then I moved the color downward. So there we go. Now I got the sky at the top and then the hills behind the rocks. So sometimes you're gonna make mistakes and you just have to problem solve, deal with it as best as you can. There I am taking some pigment off of that rock, trying to show that the rock is, the rock is lighter against that background. Now this is the stage of the painting that brings it all together. Because before I put these darks in, it, you know, I was kind of worried about how this sketch was coming out. And once I put these darks in, then it's like, okay, it's coming together now. These are, you can definitely tell what it is. And these darks are actually, uh, you know, they're not super warm. They were kind of cooler from what I was seeing, some areas of them. Some are warmer than others. You know, you just have to kind of um, just paint what you see, basically. Just go go with it. So those darks that I put down, I made sure that they was it was dry before I put those darks on top. Otherwise, they would have bled all over the place. And now I'm just varying the value of those darks here and there, blending them out, um, and just adding subtleties and nuances. And that's that's what's going to create the realism, because Mother Nature, you know, doesn't create a lot of flat stuff. You know, it's not very flat in one value. Everything has a little bit of color variation, value variety. You know, and I just try to do that here and there. And I love this round brush because I'm able to get these fine lines that I'm putting in right now. And that really gives the effect of Stonehenge. That's, that's the view that we're going for. And if you're wondering, this is, or if you're curious, this is the solstice axis of, of Stonehenge. So I thought it was a really cool location to do it. So right at the center of, of the painting here, of the stones, that's where the sun would be rising and setting in the summer and winter. So this is kind of the main axis, and this is the supposed line of where the uh, people that created Stonehenge, this is the line that they would enter. Actually, on the other side of, of what I'm painting is where they would enter, supposedly. So now I'm hitting that grass again, really bringing up the saturation, getting the value correct. Now that color is spot on. Um, and I was really happy about that. 
and uh, the rest of it, the re it's it's pretty a spot on um, sketch. You know, I, I got really lucky with this one. I think having all the people around me uh, really made me be careful about what I was doing and really focus and get everything correct. You know, I don't know if I would have done as well if there was nobody around me watching me, but uh, it's an interesting take on that. And then here's this warmer patch of grass. So, and that really just brings it all together, the values and everything. So, yeah, this was a very fun sketch, man. And it's, it's a, it was a challenge, but it was very fun. Really great experience. And there's the final Stonehenge painting sketch. Be sure to check out my other tutorial videos for drawing and painting. Also, subscribe to see future episodes. Peace.